Hey builders, big news this week with Flutterflow having just introduced support for streamed API responses, which are crucial for providing a user with a real-time response in things like chat apps. Buildship has supported streamed API responses for a while now, but without front-end support, there hasn't been an easy way to show it to the user. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily deploy an AI assistant chatbot with real-time streamed responses between Buildship and Flutterflow. I'll take you through the entire process step by step and provide you with templates for both platforms so you can start implementing this powerful feature in your own projects right away. Our pre-built templates in the description below will get you up and running immediately. With these, you just need to add your own API keys into Buildship and replace the API endpoint in Flutterflow. But if you're interested in how to implement a streaming API from scratch, I'll take you through that now. Start over in the Flutterflow marketplace at marketplace.flutterflow.io. There you're looking for the ChatGPT in Flutterflow template. Clone that and create your own project in Flutterflow. Let's have a little look at how this template is constructed. It has a list view containing all of the chat bubbles. And these are populated by a page state variable called chat history. Then when a user clicks the send button, we can see the action flow occurring here. First, we update a page state variable with the latest input from the user. Then it's making an API call to OpenAI. Oh, and look, here's a really great example of why you should keep your front end and back end separate for security reasons. Here we've got an OpenAI API key hard coded in the front end. You should never keep any of your business logic or API credentials hard-coded anywhere, but especially not in the front end. Buildship provides support for Google Secret Manager, which allows you to encrypt your API keys so that they're not visible to anyone with access to your project. In fact, they're not even visible again to you after you've added them in. I'll show you that in a second. If that succeeds, it writes the response to our chat history page state variable and so on. We're going to follow roughly the same format, but we'll change up some of the variables a little bit. We'll also swap out the existing API call for a call to Buildship, which will handle the OpenAI API call on our behalf, as well as allowing us to tap into a huge range of nodes and integrations that Buildship supports. So head on over to Buildship and into the templates section. Here you're looking for the streaming assistant template. Once you've added that template in, you just need to add in your OpenAI API key. You should store that in secrets, so it's securely encrypted. Next, you'll need to add in an assistant ID. Now you get this from playground.openai.com. Simply click on assistance and then create new assistant. Give it a name, decide the model you want to use, and then copy the assistant ID back into Buildship. Next, we need to give our assistant some instructions. I've taken these from another one of our template workflows, but they all need to follow a similar structure. In this example, our AI assistant is an expert in searching for information from different sources. Their goal is to respond to user questions and requests using the source the user provides. The assistant must respond in a concise way and ensure that its information is accurate and up-to-date. We're also giving them some tools to use. Namely, a get website tool, which will scrape a given website and return the information that's on it. You can customize these instructions so that they're just right for you, but it's always important to include a few key things. Let the assistant know its persona, what its goal is, how you want it to respond, and what you expect the information to contain. Finally, and most importantly, make sure you give it guidelines for the specific tools that you're going to give it access to, to give you the information that you want. These tools are the additional nodes that you add into the AI assistant, just like the get website tool. The final two fields are our user prompt field, which we have coming in from the body. That's the message that we're sending from our front end to provide to our AI assistant. We're also sending the thread ID back to make sure that OpenAI has a record of the conversation we've already had. Per our instructions, we also need to give our assistant our web scraping tool. This is our pre-built scrape web URL node. The description 
and purpose of the node are really important. So in our instructions, we've called this get website. So we should be consistent with our naming. The purpose is fine in this instance. With the values in the node, you can use this button here to allow the assistant to make the call on what website it should use. Now, since that's going to come through from our user, let's click that button. It's the URL and the URL to scrape that the user provides. We'll leave the selector in as the body to get as much information from the website as possible. Now, before we head back to Flutterflow, you'll notice that we're setting some response headers here. In a streaming node, these are really important because they'll send back additional information that we can access before our stream is completely finished. It's really important that we get the thread ID back from OpenAI the first time we receive it. And the way we do that is through this header key. I'll show you how that works in Flutterflow in a second. So let's ship our workflow and head back to Flutterflow to set everything up. Now, undoubtedly, the quickest and easiest way to get your API endpoint into Flutterflow is to export the YAML file by clicking the Export API button. Then over in Flutterflow, in the API section, you just hit Import. This does require a paid plan. So if you're not on a paid plan, you simply add a new API and add that endpoint in manually. Here we can see our endpoint has been imported, but we do still need to add those two variables to the body that we identified earlier. Those are message and thread ID. And we add them into Flutterflow like this. Then the final step is to turn on streamed responses. So under advanced settings, toggle on process streaming response and hit save. Then head up into response and test, and we'll just send a test hi message to our API. You'll see it's returned back a list of JSON objects, which each relate to the individual word coming back from our assistant. We'll copy this first object and we'll create a custom data type. So go over to data types, click the new create data type from JSON option, paste in our object and we'll call it chunk but you can call it whatever you like. You'll see it's created these four custom data types for us, which relate to the object that we're going to get back from our AI assistant as a stream response. So head back to your API call and toggle on pass each chunk as data type and select chunk or whatever you've named your data type and hit save. Now there are just a couple of tiny amends that we need to make to this existing template to get it set up to receive our streamed response from BuildShip. Firstly, over in the local page state variables section, we'll change this chat history variable to be a list of strings instead of JSON. Then we'll add in a variable called thread ID which will keep track of the number of messages we've had going back and forth from OpenAI. And we'll also add in a variable called message index. Then if we click on the send button, we'll make a couple of amends to this action flow here. Firstly, we'll change this update page state action to add our message to the list of chat history. then we'll tell the message index that it needs to increment. Next, we'll add another update page state node because we'll need to get Flutterflow ready to add in the response that comes back from BuildShip that 
adds a new message to the list that's empty. Next, we'll swap out the existing API call for our own build chip call. And we'll make sure that we're sending it our two variables, message and thread ID. Now with the thread ID, because we won't have one, when we start sending our very first message, we'll make some conditional formatting and we'll say that if our thread ID is unset or empty, we'll just send an empty string and BuildChip's AI assistant will know what to do with that. Otherwise, if we do have a thread ID, meaning we're halfway through a conversation, well, we'll send that back to make sure that we continue that conversation. Now, Streamed API responses in BuildShip work a little differently to normal. We'll remove this conditional formatting node because a success or an error is recorded differently. See how we have these three new options within our API call. On message, on error, and on close. We'll start with the on message action. We'll go in and say that every time we receive a chunk of a message, we'll add that onto our chat history. At the index that we're at via our message index variable. Now here, this can get a little confusing, but we want to add the word that's come back each time from our API response. So we'll select service sent events, JSON to data type. Now remember we've called it chunk and we need to find the word inside that object. So we select data structure field, Delta data structure field, Content, item at index, first, data structure field, text, and finally, data structure field, value. Now, all that might seem a little confusing, but actually, when you click confirm and go back into your API call, If we run another test, you'll see that in each object, we've just told it to go to Delta, Content, and the first item in the array, Text, and get the value. Then with our on close action, we want to increment our page state variable message index up one to say that we're on to the next message. There's a couple of other little things that you'll want to do to make sure that your chat interface is always right at the end. So here under on message, add a scroll to action and make sure that at all times, your list view is at the end of the list. Similarly, once the chat is closed off, you'll want to do the same thing. And then say you have an error. Well, we'll want to account for that as well. So we'll want to update our page state chat history item at the message index we're on to say, sorry, there was an error. We'll 
we'll need to increment our message index up by one because the user can respond. And we'll also want to send our list view to the end. We also need to add in our thread ID from our response header after our API call has been made. Now with our list view, we'll check that it's still creating its children from our page state variable called chat history. That's great, but we do need to alter our text bubbles. These now just need to come from the chat item and we select it just like this. Now all it's left to do is test it out. And there you have it, Flutterflow's native support for streaming API responses brought to life with BuildShip. This opens up a whole new world of possibilities for creating dynamic, engaging apps that harness the wide range of streaming APIs out there, now possible without any custom code or complicated workarounds. Just pure, seamless integration between BuildShip and Flutterflow. I can't wait to see what incredible projects you'll create with this new functionality. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more, and let's build shift.